Welcome to the AI for You Cafe today on March 4th. I'm going to let all the people come in and join. Great that you're here. And we will start slowly. The theme of today is, as you can read, A and education to fight with bias. And the speaker is today, Moyan Asgari from Women in AI from Paris in France, and she will introduce herself later, but hello, Moyan. Hi, glad to be here. Thanks for Thank the invitation. You. Thank you that you came. My name is Carmen McWilliams, and I'm the moderator and organizer, I'm the director of the company Grassroot Arts and partner in the current European AI for EU project. Please take notice that this session will be recorded. The recording of this live web session will be available afterwards on our AI for You website. Please don't share any confidential information in the cafe. And in this cafe, the speakers express their personal view and opinions. This is not necessarily the official AI for You project opinion. So, and I'm now showing you the second slide. Moment. What is the AI for You web cafe about? The web cafe is public and offers a series of live web sessions on AI. The cafe is an online forum to gain insights into the European AI scene. Participants get the chance to share knowledge and experiences and meet stakeholders from various areas of AI research and application. We are running this cafe since last fall, and we are always welcoming applications for speakers. So if you feel like be one day also a speaker, please drop me an email. This is an interactive session and live, of course. On the right side, you have a panel. Uh, you should see also the menu questions and chat there you can write your questions during the presentation you can write them down and after moyan's presentation i will read these questions and then moyan will answer this is our q a session which will, the q a session is about 15 minutes max at the end of the presentation so now again welcome here in the AI for You Cafe. Now I will hand over to you, Moyan. I will make you the moderator, and you ask me that you can introduce yourself. So I'm very happy you're here, and I can see now your presentation. Great. So. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to put it on full screen. Um, so hello everybody. I'm really, really grateful and um, happy to be here. This is the first time I do the web cafe and I'm really grateful to Carmen to inviting me here. Um, so I'm gonna, my presentation will be basically about um, our organization, which I'm representing, Women in AI, and also about uh, why education is important today and how we can do to come up with biases and the gender gap that we have in the field. Um, just a brief story, uh, introduction about myself. Um, so um, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a tech entrepreneur. Today I'm based in Paris. I come originally from Iran. Um, I have a few initiatives uh, that I've launched and uh, Women AI is basically um, my main uh, initiative uh, that I'm working on. I'm the co-founder and uh, our mission is basically to close the gender gap in AI by empowering more women, more girls uh, to learn about AI, uh, focusing a lot on education, uh, activities that we have such as uh, events um, and that I'm going to go more in uh, details of uh, our activities. Um, I also do um, some conferences, public speaking, help um, some startups in their um, in their um, basically business, um, advising some of them. And um, yeah, that's basically about me. 
And so we'd like to tell you a little bit about Women AI. So we are actually a nonprofit organization um, based out of Paris, and we call ourselves um, a do tank that we're working toward gender in inclusive AI. So it's a big community that everybody can join, um, men or women, no matter how, uh, what is your background, what is your age, you can join to uh, connect and learn more about how you can um, share your knowledge and learn more about AI. Um, so we have a, actually a big community today around the world um, that we have different chapters run by our local ambassadors. Everything is basically on voluntary basis. Um, to give you just a little bit of um, the numbers that we have, so our community extends to 2,000, uh, more than 3,200 members uh, from over 110 countries. Uh, we have uh, 28 um, active chapters around the world that are run by the ambassadors and it's increasing. Um, and our main activities are community activities um, that I'm going to explain more, events, education, and um, also research and publication. So the main question today is why do we need uh, education AI and why now? If you look at the uh, growth of all these technologies over the past uh, years, you see like, uh, let's say in the 1980s, we had like PCs coming and then in the 90s and we, till the age of millennials, the internet came and then we saw the growth of social media and other platforms and applications. And recently over the past, uh, let's say like five years, four or five years, we see a lot of a growth in uh, new technologies, deep tech, artificial intelligence. We see IoT rising, robots, quantum com computing, blockchain. And this, this growth is not linear, it's exponential. So that means that we, are, we need to learn more and more faster every day. We need to really update ourselves. And you see more and more companies um, like Google, Facebook, all these big giant companies that are going more towards um, having the AI in, in the core of their companies, calling them so the AI first companies. That means that they are really investing a lot in AI, they need more uh, talents in AI, and uh, the topics like um, bias or um, basically uh, controversial topics around AI ethics is coming um, more and becoming more important. And if you look at AI and what is bringing it to us, uh, it's really um, also helping us maybe to go away from that, early, um, that daily basis routine life that we have that we used to do maybe let's let's say up, updating the same files every day, doing the, the, the repetitive jobs that a computer can do it better and we can get away from those repetitive boring jobs and think a little bit more about what we can bring as those human values that we have. I believe that AI can help us to um, get closer to those human lives. Of course, we have these days a lot of conversation and controversial um, arguments about how AI is replacing people, how AI is replacing jobs, but I believe that AI also can help us if we're really, really learning those things that we need to adapt with this growth, this um, pace of technology advancement, we can really get closer to those roots of a uh, human being, which is more into emotional intelligence and EQ. Um, and we see more and more AI going into different industries. So it's not only one industry having AI into it, it's so many industries from health to defense to, uh, to different industries, food um, and so on. So it, it's really used everywhere and it's not specifically to one single job. Um, we also see that we have um, some um, basic challenges in our world like climate change. Um, over the past uh, uh, one, two years, they, um, many, many uh, big companies, big conferences, let's say World Economic Forum, all they come to this conclusion that um, we might have 10 to 12 years maximum to really revert the effects of climate change. So uh, are we really that fast to come, uh, come against you know, those um, pollutions that we're creating? Maybe AI can help us to get there. Maybe we can use technologies like AI to to help our, um, the biggest issues of the world that we have today and help us to, um, to came, come over them. For instance, uh, one of these um, companies that are working on AI, 
is that they're using some um, AI uh, algorithms to, 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 to help them um, basically detect the plastics in the root of the, the oceans because um, over 80% of the plastics that we have that are not on the surface of the planet, they are in deep down in the sea. So um, this company um, is using AI um, uh, fish, um, re image recognition to uh, find those plastics where they are stuck and how we could get them out. That's, for example, one part of the solution that we can solve. Um, something more maybe science fiction is that um, we are discovering new frontiers um, in space with the help of AI and machine learning. And that is actually something that um, we might, might not be able to, we, we were not being able to do it before, but now with the help of AI and machine learning, uh, we are able to do that. So it's very exciting to, to think about it this way as well. Um, one of the topics also that is very controversial is weaponless AI. Um, that it basically needs um, the global um, knowledge, the global um, um, agreements about it, how we're using these AIs, that the topic of ethics comes here, that um, we should know about it, so we should educate ourselves about it, because these are things that are impacting us fundamentally. And it's not only people who are engineers, it's not only people who are in defense, they are involved and impacted, there are, there are many, many people getting involved and get impacted. So we have some topic, a topic, very important topic that actually is a core um, topic at Women in AI also is gender, um, a gender gap. And all our activities are toward gender balance. Um, we have, um, according to World Economic Forum, to many statistics, it is maybe two more, more than 200 years to get to parity um, between genders and the percentage of uh, women in, um, in STEM and in, um, towards AI and even to the um, leadership positions is something around 12% globally, which is very low. So this is a topic that uh, it's creating a lot of problems in applications and bias in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in our future. So that's uh, basically a big, big um, issue that we need to solve it. And I believe we should not wait 200 years and we should uh, act faster. So the question that I want to ask you and the answers that I want to bring you is how we can do that, how we can educate ourselves, our kids, our girls to be more interested in AI and to close this gender gap. So we are doing some activities at Women, Women AI to tackle this issue. For instance, we have an educational program called Way to Go. It's basically a program uh, towards uh, for uh, women with uh, or girls um, with earlier age, mostly before actually they uh, choose their um, their major at the university, uh, to uh, encourage them to go for uh, engineering degrees and um, potentially start a career in AI. We have workshops for them on AI and robotics. We help them to discover this area and some um, coding sessions. And that's how basically we're trying to um, generate and uh, reborn the next uh, the next actually um, workforce for our um, AI talents in the companies and in the industry, creating more role models. Um, so in the, within way to go we have um, a concept called Way Camp. So these are the two or three days um, mostly um, workshops that is uh, destined for for girls between four and 18 years old. So we've done that in different countries. Uh, we're basically global. So we have ambassadors in, uh, um, in different countries that are doing that. We, we organize camps in uh, Berlin, Johannesburg, Sydney, Karachi, Paris, Lausanne. And we, we decide we have in our agenda to organize um, around 10 more camps this year. So if anybody is interested in those countries or those cities or anywhere else, we're more than happy to collaborate. Um, so in one of our camps, we had actually this amazing lady. Um, she was 14 years old and I wanted to quote her here because that's very, uh, very much our dream to, to, to go towards this direction, to give more power to our girls. She was telling us that um, there are so many people who don't understand my choice of studying engineering. Um, but my dream is to see a day that nobody tells me um, I'm not made for tech. So that's, that's her dream. And I, I, I wish that we reach one day to, to see that 
um, our teachers at school, they don't question us, our parents, they don't question us, our society doesn't do that, so everybody can um, reach to their potential. Um, I'm going to go really quickly on the next slides, but basically I would like to just tell you how other uh, type, types of education and empowerment activities can help to uh, close this gender gap. For instance, Way Open Door is another educative, uh, educative uh, program that we have that we ask big companies to open the doors so um, so talents, girls, uh, young talents, they can understand, they can project themselves. Um, where on those companies they can take it, let's say, data scientist position, AI position, something that is related to them. So once they are motivated to study AI now, what can they do? According to statistics, 80% um, of the girls that they hadn't chosen um, engineering degrees in their studies um, told, uh, actually that's a study by, uh, by Stanford, they said that they would go to the engineering degrees if they knew that they have a good um, career opportunity. That means that they had been chosen their, not to go to engineering because they were thinking there's no opportunity for them. So that's a really big issue that we should really close this gap by collaborating with corporations and governments and schools. We also organize, as I told you, a lot of events in different cities and different countries. Um, we have a format that we give the stage to women. We call it a way talk. So women take the stage, but the audience is mixed. So these women are talking about their expertise. However they are talking, a man could, could do the same thing. Um, basically, they don't talk about diversity, they talk about their expert, expertise, what they are creating, what is their, their real responsibility, and they are creating some sort of an invisible role model um, influence, basically, in the, uh, the, through these events. That's our main goal. And then finally, we have our, something called Way on Stage. We also have uh, these uh, experts in AI around the world, and we help them to go on stage at different big conferences. So we are already showing the, the society that we have experts in AI, we have these amazing role models, and they can actually speak up and share their knowledge. Um, we also praise women uh, time to time. We write their stories. Uh, it's very important, this part of role model creation, because that's how we can, we can um, show to everybody that, hey, there are people you can recruit. Hey, there are people that they can actually be role models for younger generation. Um, and also funding. Uh, funding and PR is very important. So we launched an initiative called Way Awards. It's basically to help uh, female entrepreneurs to, to get selected. To, they can actually get, receive a little bit of funding um, getting an acceleration program um, by our sponsors. And they can basically um, be uh, awarded for the great job that they're doing. Um, in the field of entrepreneurship, we also lack a lot of uh, female representation. So this is also how we can help them to, to, to encourage female founders in taking initiative to launch their own companies. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about actually what we do women here at AI for EU, I also I just want to mention that we really need the governments and in institutional um, organizations to be on board to help to uh, close the gender gap. There are initiatives by European Commission to forcing um, basically companies recruit um, a percentage, like a, it's obligatory basically to recruit a certain per percentage of women in the in their boards. Um, there are many, many good initiatives in that sense. AI for good also is a big um, big topic like SDG, all this stuff. And AI for you, um, at AI for you, we are basically, um, we have created a gender committee. So we, we are also bringing um, gender, um, ba gender balance activities, gender inclusive activities within the consortium, within the project. And um, we are, um, we are also focusing a lot on education. So um, this is very good to have basically the support of the European Commission, the support of um, all the consortium members of AI for You, and like having the web cafes, for instance, it helps us to spread the world out and um, hopefully we are getting there and um, we can uh, encourage more people to, to get on board. Um, just to summarize, actually, like just one sentence about what I think that it's, it's true for, for anything, basically, 
Stefan Covey also says that technology is a great slave but a terrible master. So it depends how we are using um, the technologies. AI is an awesome technology, but that can be also um, I mean to um, I mean to basically um, increase the gender gap, increase uh, the problems that we have. Let's not do that and let's actually use it for the good. Thank you so much, everybody. This was all I wanted to present. So I'm more than happy to answer your questions and uh, your comments. So please feel free. And Carmen, please, if you have any questions, I'm at your disposition. Yes. Thank you, Moyan. Thank you. It was a great presentation. And I would like to ask the folks a question. But also, I want to encourage the participants, please write down your questions and I will read them and um, yeah, ask them to Moyan. There is a question panel on the right side, so just feel free to ask your questions. So Moyan, I would like to know how you made it to AI. What brought you to AI? Yes, myself. Uh, actually, it was by chance. I was organizing an event because I, for a long time, I was organizing many events, uh, hackathons, um, startup weekends, and and one of them was about AI. So I got to know a few a few girls there that um, actually we were not so many. So the hackathon was about AI, and we were only four girls out of hundred. And that was where <laughs> we wondered. So where are the other girls? Where where is everybody? And slowly, we, I got interested into AI through that. And then I was attending different conferences, different meetups. Um, and always, uh, the room was full of men. And somehow, I was feeling that I'm not really welcome there. And I, I have an engineering background. I didn't have so much like problems of techniques, but still, like I was maybe a bit um, away, uh, farther from the, the levels of the the people who were in the room so it was it was some somehow weird to be sometimes the only woman in the field and but that's how I, I got into AI I started actually online courses at some point and um, some coding courses but some like mostly self self um, thought okay great yes um... I have some questions from the audience, <laughs> so I'm going to read them. Uh, it's Guido Capio. He, said, he congratulates you for your presentation. Thank Congress, you. What are your medium long term goals? How can we support you here in Italy? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful question. We actually don't have an ambassador in Italy, but we are really, really much looking forward to having an ambassador. Um, our uh, medium goals is basically in 2020. Um, we would like to um, expand the network and we would like to focus a lot, uh, focus more on education. So education is our own agenda. Um, as I said, we have um, decided to launch more uh, camps around the world. We also have, um, we have uh, going to, we are going to have Way Awards, which is the uh, global um, award for women entrepreneurs in AI. Actually, making it global by having Australia and APAC area joining us. So so far, had been European. So that's our goal for for this year. Um, and we have also recently launched a Way Accelerate for individuals who want to launch a, launch their business in AI, who want to become an entrepreneur. So that's also an, an, an initiative that we are bringing this year. We're bringing so many initiatives like in the short term. So long term, basically, the mission is to close the close the gender gap as much as we can, collaborating with institutions, uh, with governments. We are in touch now and had been advised, uh, had been asked to advise and consult a European Parliament um, on different matters about AI and education ethics. Um, so yeah. That's we are structuring more about uh, our organization, and uh, we are, we would like to make our chapters more independent and bigger. So anybody who would like to join us now, they can they can um, apply actually to become the local chapter uh, legally, and we are going to um, empower them to to be able to do that. Great, yeah, thank you and. Also, Guido says thank you. <laughs> He's like in the moment. You can actually, if anybody wants, also you can also raise a hand, and then I could give you the mic. But let's continue with the chat and with the text. Susanna uh, Takova, sorry for pronouncing, maybe wrong. Hi, Susanna. 
Um, Moja, can we participate in Wake Camp from Slovakia? Is it possible to organize it here? Could you please, could you help us? I am interested in the activities for good. Wonderful. We do not have an ambassador in Slovakia, but we were um, asked from the uh, a forum there. I think the name is Globesk from um, Slovakia, and they they asked us to join. With, well, join and you know help them maybe moderate a panel organize uh, some workshops um we once we have an ambassador locally we can do everything so if you are interested or you know anybody who's interested to joining us as an ambassador uh, i'm more than happy to to open all the access and help you launch that chapter and organizing events so definitely that's a totally a big goal for us great uh, May, uh, Moyan, it's my question now. Can sure. they just write you, email you, or go of with course, the best? I actually, I don't know if my screen is still there, but my email is that, mujan at womenin.ai.co. Mm -hmm. um, you can write me there, and you mm -hmm. can, in the title, if you put web cafe, follow up or something, I would, I would understand uh, very fast that that's you, and definitely I can give you more information about it. We have a website also, womenin.ai.co that you can visit, you can see all our ambassadors around the world, you can see our events. Unfortunately, many of the events have been cancelled recently because of Corona in different cities. Um, but yes, we already have already some events going on. So if you yeah. see an ambassador already on the website, you can join them on their local team. I think they would be super, super happy to welcome you. If you don't have an ambassador there, if you are interested, we can definitely discuss and um, make you the local ambassador. Right. Yes, and now Alessandro. Alessandro, he's a partner also in AI for You project. Hi, Alessandro. He says, great initiative. Do we have a space in the AI for You platform where AI women and their activities can be made visible? Do you know about that? I don't. A wonderful question. So with AI for You and Gender Committee, one of the ideas that we are, we are working on now is to create a space for um, actually a crit critic space for gender committee and all the as, um, initiatives that there are, they exist for women uh, in the European scale to add them there. So to first of all present what is happening in Europe toward gender um, balance, what are the organization and what we are bringing. Um, so this is under development. I don't have the exact date or exact announcement, but this is something is gonna happen. I can definitely uh, follow up on that. And if you want to email me to give you more information, um, yes, it will be my pleasure. Great, great. So also stay tuned with the AI for EU platform. <laughs> yes, the beta actually version had been released. So we were so excited about it. Um, I and I invite you to actually go on the website, AI for EU and um, basically if, you're, if you haven't registered already, so join on it and uh, you will see you will receive more information by that way yes and here comes natalie natalie is a um, good friend from canada hi natalie uh, how do you see ai in service to projects and subjects that are of interest for women uh, for example caring for humans uh, sorry could you not repeat the question again so how do you see ai in service to projects and subjects that are of interest for women. Example for is caring for humans. Mm -hmm. I see. So I think your question is about why, for example, um, you're, you're mentioning the EQ or more human, um, yeah, human uh, personality or emotion that is more linked to women. Um, I know there are a couple of uh, projects that they actually collaborate on, together online. Uh, and collaborative um, platforms to work on those aspects. I think that, um, as I mentioned, um, I believe that AI will help us to get closer to our roots, which are those human roots, because for a machine, for, for AI today, it's so hard to become like humans and to imitate the very, very basic um, human things like uh, sensing, um, like uh, the five, five, six, basically initial senses. It's super hard actually to become, uh, to be, to imitate that. So I think that projects like that is super interesting. Um, I think you can definitely find platform that they work on that. Um, I think 
there is one company, there is one platform that are also a nonprofit, Omenta, if I'm not mistaken the name, they are working on such um, uh, projects that are good for the humanity, good for the world, good for the society, and they use AI and they call it the AI enthusiasts coming on the platform, working together um, on challenges. Actually, these projects are challenges for them. So you come up, you get involved in the challenge, and all of you, you have the same mission to basically uh, solve that challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, uh, that's what I can um, tell you uh, for, of my understanding so far. Yes. And of course, it's um, for us all interest is like the society development challenges, like, um, I mean, save the planet. It's not particular to women, it's to men and women. Yes, it's for everybody, exactly. And AI can be, it should be a tool, not um, for us to a goal. So AI can help us to do things better, to accelerate things for us to be more precise. Um, so we should maybe think about it that way. It's a, it's helping us to achieve what we want. So if you are a man or a woman, if you have an idea, if you want to do something that is uh, we think there's value in it and helps the society, of course we can do it and use AI to help us to do that. Yes. Yes. And here comes Maria Kinsle. <laughs> what do you think causes the gender gap, especially in the field of AI? Um, so the field of AI is actually not that uh, uh, different than tech or the, the, the domains we call it STEM, like science, technology, engineering and math. Um, so we lack a lot of, uh, we lack actually um, a lot of women in these fields as well. And that's why it results in AI, because AI is at the end a lot of mathematics, it's linked to engineering and it links, it links to computer science and coding, programming. So that's why it's results in that. And um, if you go back in, I think the, a, I don't remember exactly the decade, but when they started to commercialize uh, personal computers, that was actually the mistake of marketing that they uh, started to market personal computers as a, a man's a men's tool. So basically men look like, okay, more professional, having PC going to work. Um, and slowly it became something for guys, for boys, not for women. And that was, I believe that was a marketing um, fault. Uh, just before that, we had these huge big rooms for computers and women actually were more uh, doing that than, than men. And the first um, person who actually created the first algorithm uh, was a woman that they call her the first uh, co computer scientist, basically. So the, the, the problem is coming from that. And the problem today is coming from following this uh, issue of mindset in the society because marketing is so strong, you can change people's mind. Um, and so we are following it, we are employing it in our society, in our families, um, buying, for example, dolls for girls, buying cars for boys and, and in, uh, in the school. Um, my cousins in Paris, for instance, they go to school, they're, their teachers, they don't even listen to them. They say, oh, you're a girl, you're like a tourist here, these kind of stereotypes. So it's, it's on us now how to uh, educate our kids and how to stop these stereotypes and do something about it. Yes, yes, thank you. And here's also thank you from Susanna. And here comes Xin Chen. I will say we are around the world. Gender bias is just one aspect of bias. There are others such as religious, race, color. What is the special impact on women in AI to society into, and to industry? Yes, a wonderful question. Um, as I mentioned, gender bias is actually what we are focusing mostly at women in AI. That's our niche, but diversity in general is very important for AI. It's very important to even um, encourage our developers to learn more about things that are not related to development and to, to know what what is the end user of the product they're building and considering all the society, not only a, um, a certain you know small uh, category of them. So gender bias, of course, is one of them. Uh, women in AI, so far what we're doing is we are involving everybody with different differences of um, religion, colors, um, backgrounds, and all the diversity that we can. We are trying to bring everybody to become our ambassadors. Everybody can become a member. And um, we have actually some, um, some events that are tackling other parts of the 
uh, bias, not only gender bias, in our events that I mentioned you, and you can also go on, on our event by page and see all the topics of events that we have organized. But we're not talking we're not talking only about gender bias. We're talking uh, a lot about other types of bias. And your question is uh, totally totally correct. Yes. And now now comes one more question um, from Alessandro. Would a more interdisciplinary approach to AI help reducing the gender gap? Yes, yes, I believe definitely it can help us. It can help. The more we have a different um, industry, different backgrounds, different people getting involved in AI, the more we have um, ideas and mindsets that we can. We need to um, include them in decisions, in the programs, in the in the, in the AI programs that we have. So yes, definitely can help. I have not a question, but a comment. Uh, it's, uh, it's for me <laughs> because there's just the white paper coming out, came out from the commission, and it's like also about um, bias, no? of course, how to um, how to bridge uh, and how to solve the bias. And there will be a legislative, a legislative framework for AI um, coming out, and especially here, I know that women are asked to help. <laughs> Everybody is asked to help, but they are actively looking for um, also women to help. And last week we had Marta in our cafe and she was even asked to join. So uh, it is on the website from the European Commission. It's the white paper AI, you will find it right away. And everybody, of course, men and women are asked to help, but we are still lacking women, <laughs> especially. Uh, so please join, experts are needed. So my uh, next question is, um, uh, what are your next big plans for women in AI, which you are like, basically, is, is there a project, something you really want to do, which you're not doing yet? Is there like something um, where you need a lot of money for? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're in, in investors around, please come and <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> but um, so, as I said, the big plan for us uh, for 2020 is that we um, we excel, uh, we ex scale our local activities to global because um, what we do as of now is that we test some local activities and then we expand it globally, like way awards and uh, like way accelerate. Now we would like to actually expand it. We would like to have more collaboration with universities. Our, like our actually dream would be to change the agenda to help governments and policies to uh, policymakers to think more um, about how to uh, create some some regulations around uh, g diversity in AI and focusing on gender diversity in AI and maybe putting some agenda on schools how do they um, train um, teachers how do they uh, solve this issue of um, this gap basically for motivation motivational gap between girls and boys because that's where we are going to have less women because how do you have like uh, more more women working on AI? Is you need to have that available human resource to to pour them into the into the companies into those leadership leader positions. If you don't have them, you can't have it. So the 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 solution comes from the youth, from the from the young generation. So the question is how to start from scratch, from the root, to grow these old talents to to be able to make a better future for us to, to work on those areas. So I think that on the agenda for us, the big, big maybe dream, big, big vision would be how we could hand by hand uh, work with policymakers and and institutions to 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 create some regulations, ethical um, principles which turn into regulations because we have a lot of principles so far, but regulations around AI would is still a bit far. Yes. Yes. And here I think now we are coming to the last question. Um, one more from the from Ramin Amiri. Um, hi, Moyan. Thanks for your presentation. Unbiasing and diversifying AI is incredibly important. One challenge that I see emerging within the AI diversity and unbiasing movement is increasing competition between different groups be it those promoting female inclusion, ethnic diversity, inclusion of low income communities, et cetera, in AI. Now the question, how can we make sure that really everyone gets a voice in AI in a less competitive, 
positive some way. That's yes, uh, th thanks a lot for your question and your comment. Um, we are actually not seeing ourselves competitors with other initiatives. We in fact see that we are um, helping each other and raising more aware awareness around the topic. Of course, you tap on internet and Google, you'll see like a lot of initiatives like Girls in Tech, Girls in AI, Women in Tech, Women in AI, all these initiatives. And and I personally, myself, I ad admire all of them and I believe that the power is to to merge and to, uh, to join forces to create bigger, more impactful um, initiatives. For instance, at AI for EU, the gender committee, we have people from uh, other initiatives like uh, women in data science and machine learning, they're joining us. We're all putting our efforts and time towards the same goal. So I do not believe that we should see each other as competitors, but also as um, as teammates. We are also you know, organizing many events with uh, women in tech, for instance, that we really appreciate them and they are really our, uh, one of our big partners. So yes, I do believe that we should see each other as uh, teammates. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Moyan. I will now slowly close the session for today. This was great. And I want to announce <laughs> the next one coming, which is next week on Wednesday again at 3 p.m. And this will be this time uh, Joachim Köhler from the Fraunhofer Institute and from Germany, St. Augustine. And he will talk about the publication process and the AI resource catalog of the AI for You platform. So this time it will be like hands on how to use um, our project platform. So please join if you're interested. Also, we will have the recording of this session available um, as soon. Moyan says it's okay. <laughs> yes, of course, it's okay <laughs> for myself. You first see it. Don't say. <laughs> First you, and then uh, and then we uh, we basically have it then also on the AI for You platform. And if you want to have the presentation from Moyan, you can also ask us me or Moyan, uh, and we will send it to you. And now I want to thank you. Today it is a little bit shorter the session, but I like because we had a lot of question and answering. And thank you, Moyan, again for this very 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 exciting presentation and also session on question answers thank you and have a nice day no? thank bye you everybody bye. yes thank you carmen have a great day to everyone yes thank you cheers, cheers. Bye, bye.